as I've told you from time to time, interesting things happen when my family, the Palmer family, gets together for a reunion. And in the interest of full disclosure this morning, I'm not going to give you any examples. <laughs> but what I am willing to share with you is a greeting that a cousin of mine always employs when we hook up together after a long absence. The first words from his mouth are always, well, what's the good word? And I've grown to appreciate that greeting over the years. There were lots of different directions he could have gone in greeting his family that he hadn't seen for a while. He could have launched into an endless litany of his aches and pains and numerous misfortunes. He could have run up all breathless with the latest family gossip to share. He could have said nothing at all and just ignored the rest of the family completely. His attention could have been riveted on the food that was piled up for the reunion feast. He could have gone in any of those directions, but instead went with that slap on the shoulder and, what's the good word? And you know what? Everyone looked forward to seeing him whenever the Palmers get together. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about things that are important to our family here, our life together as this community we call Gilbert Presbyterian Church. We talked about how crucial it is that we see a relationship with Jesus Christ as the foundation that holds this family together. We talked about ways we support each other, ways that we care for each other, ways that we pray for one another, and ways that we encourage each other, and what that means for us as we face difficult times, as we face challenging times in our lives. And woven through all those messages has been a call to take a look at all the ways that our stewardship of gifts supports the ministry here. How do you thank God for what this family means to you? How does God call you to share what God has given to you so that others can hear the good news, the good word of the gospel? So, what's the good word that this family of faith is sharing this morning? It's kind of a tough question. I follow the news every day, as you do, I'm sure, and I'm here to admit that there are times when I'm tempted just to turn it off and float in a state of blissful ignorance. I just get tired of the negativism, the yelling and the shouting, the posturing and the complaining. I listen and I listen, and I hardly ever hear a good word or a bit of good news. And so I'm grateful to be able to get together with you folks each week. I'm grateful to be able to share some words that we love calling the good news when we get together, the gospel, because I need that assurance that God has things well in hand. I need to have my faith strengthened by all of you. And I'm encouraged when I read the words that Paul wrote years ago to another faith family that was worshiping in Thessalonica. Here were believers who had caught a glimpse of how their lives could truly be turned upside down when they claim Jesus Christ as Lord. Paul writes, Our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Now, as I look at this congregation, I believe we have a lot in common with those first century Christians. We are people who have received the word, just as they did. The most important thing we can do as a faith family is to be a conduit through which that word can now flow. As I thought about what Paul wrote to the church centuries ago, for some reason the image of an electrical schematic drawing came to my mind. I'm not an electrical engineer by any sense of imagination. But do you know the type of design plan I'm talking about? The one that traces the current as it makes its way through the house with breakers and with fuses and transistors and transformers and outlets and switches. It's all designed to be able to root and direct the power that makes things happen. Well, next Sunday at a congregational meeting that we've talked about, I invite you to prepare to look at the budget for 2012 as maybe being that schematic for the way that the word is flowing through this family. That might be 
be shocking. Maybe. But you all could have a story to tell about the way that you received the good word that God had for you through your interaction together as brothers and sisters in Christ. You might be part of one of the Bible study classes that takes place here during the year, one of the, during the week rather, one of the Sunday school classes that meets here on Sunday morning. Maybe you received a good word while working on a quilt or knitting a prayer shawl and as you shared what was going on in your life with the other knitters and quilt makers. Some of you maybe received a good word in a package with Mont Lure written all over it. Maybe God's word was opened up to you as you served a meal at Paz de Cristo. Or maybe God's spirit spoke to you in a sermon or a song or a prayer during the worship service. There's just no limit to the variety of ways that God's word is poured out to you. And we shared a little bit of that with our minute for mission this morning as well. There's no limit to the ways that you can receive that word. We talked about that in the adult Sunday school class that meets over the Christian Ed building last Sunday. And we were asked to remember when we first received the word. Some folks could pinpoint to the day when God spoke to them and when their life was changed as they heard that good word. Others had the experience of growing up in the church and having had that word fed to them from infancy on up through adulthood. There was no black or white experience or having a sudden enlightenment and life change. They just grew up in the faith. And that word was a steady part of their diet. And that's how a faith family lives its life together. We receive the word and then we share our experiences. We receive the word as we learn to talk about the working of God's spirit in our lives. That should be one of the important things that takes place when we gather together week by week. We should all be asking ourselves and asking each other, hey, what's the good word? What has God done in your life this past week? And be willing to share that. I hope that uh, Sunday morning here at Gilbert Presbyterian Church is, is like a springboard for you that launches you into the rest of the week. Maybe you talk about something that someone said in a class. Maybe, hopefully, you talk with your kids about what they learned or studied in Sunday school. You might even discuss a sermon in the car on the way home and not run any red lights in the process. <laughs> or maybe this Sunday family gathering is a chance for you to open yourselves up to let the Spirit of God work through you to change the life of somebody else. We pray for each other here. We share blessings and pain. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We weep with those who weep. That's what the faith family does. That's how we receive the word. Sometimes we make commitments to each other. To be there for each other. We mark milestones in our life together as a family. We had a baptism in the first service this morning. And welcome to Callan Montgomery fails into this worshiping community of faith. Baptisms are one of the true gifts that Jesus gave the church. They're a chance for us to let the good news loose just a little bit. And the good word tells us that God created us, that God loves us. The good word tells us that we were created to live in a community and to create a climate in this community where the love of God in Jesus Christ can take root and grow. That's what it means to be a family. We baptize folks into this family. And then we promise to do everything that we can with God's help to see that that person comes to an understanding of how much God loves them. And that's the work that lasts for a lifetime. And probably no commitment that you make has any more potential than when you stand up when a child is baptized and say, I'm going to do everything I can to support that child as he or she grows in faith. Paul was excited to tell church members in Thessalonica that the good word was spreading about their faith. He says, the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and in, in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. What do you think Paul would write about us 
who make up this family of faith at Gilbert Presbyterian Church. Do you think we are known by our faith? Are we known for our fellowship? Are we known at all by our neighbors or by the people who are driving by this, this building right now as we worship inside these walls? I'll say it again. There is no limit to the variety of ways that God's work is poured out to you, and there's no limit of the ways that you can receive those gifts. Stewardship is not just about giving. It's about understanding the source of gifts that God has called us to care for and then return to the giver. And I challenge you to devote yourselves to prayer until we meet here again next Sunday. I believe that God has plans for this family. May we be as free with God's gifts as God was free and gracious in giving them to us. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have given us life itself. And so as we come together Sunday by Sunday, as this family of faith, as your people gathered in worship, show us how we can give our lives back to you. Take our lives, Lord, shape them, mold them, make us into the people, make us into the family that you would have us be sharing all the resources and gifts that you have given to us to your glory and praise. In Jesus' name.